Eat the butter that you need is Jesus Christ who takes away the sin of the world. No one else can take away your sin and mine. Jesus Christ alone has suffered the penalty to God's infinite justice. And that penalty was death. Infinite punishment would have been ours had we not believed on the name of the only God and Son of God. And this is the judgment. Judgment of sin has brought death. The soul that sins, it shall die. Judgment came on sin because of man's unbelief, because of atheism. In our first parents, there was atheism. They did not believe God, and so the death penalty came upon them. And the only one who could pay the death penalty was Jesus Christ. The only one who can pay the penalty for your sins and mine is the infinite Son of God. He came into time to satisfy divine justice by his own death in the place of sinners. That's why he came. He came to pay the penalty to God's infinite justice. And only an eternal being could pay that penalty. If Jesus Christ had only been finite, if he had just been a human being and not the God-man, he could never have paid the penalty. But because he came from eternity, he came from heaven, he came out from the Father and came into the world, and again he left the world and went to the Father. My dear friends, he entered into time. Time was created by God. We were created in time. And God entered into time in the person of his beloved Son that he might pay that penalty to that infinite justice. It had to be an infinite being, the infinite Son of God. No one else could pay that penalty. That's why Jesus Christ could say to men and women, your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. And give them the assurance of the forgiveness of their sins because of his blood that he would shed on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus Christ is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for us. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's why he came to pay the penalty to God's justice. Will you not turn from your wickedness and live? Will you not turn from your atheism? Will you not turn from your unbelief? Because unbelief is the root cause of all sin. I was once an unbeliever. I was once dead in sin until Jesus Christ made me alive from the dead by sending his Holy Spirit into my heart, crying, Abba, Father. And in Jesus Christ, we have the forgiveness of sin, the assurance of forgiveness, not through the Pope of Rome, not through any prophet or any religious man, but through the eternal Son of God, we have the forgiveness of sin. We have the assurance of forgiveness through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. All sin. Whatever your sin may be today, however great your sin may be, your nature is the same as any other man's. And the nature of sin in you separates you from a loving and holy God. Jesus Christ came to pay the penalty by shedding his own blood once on the cross. Not every mass, no. He shed his blood once on the cross. The mass is a bloodless sacrifice. The mass cannot take away your sin. But Jesus Christ shed his own blood for the remission of sin. And those of us who have believed in him, we know that we are pardoned. We know that we are washed. We know that the blood of Jesus Christ goes on speaking for the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Abel cried to God from the ground. But the blood of Jesus Christ speaks mercy and pardon and grace. It speaks from heaven. The blood of Jesus Christ 
speaks pardon, forgiveness. It was one sacrifice, one offering, one oblation and satisfaction and propitiation to the justice of God. And Jesus Christ has provided that. And so those of us who believe, those of us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are justified from all things by which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The law made nothing perfect. The law made nothing perfect. Even the law itself is perfect. The law is holy and just and good. But the law cannot clean a person up from their sin. The law cannot change your nature. When you look in the mirror in the morning, you see a disheveled appearance. When you look in the mirror, you see wrinkles, you see dirt. You have to be cleaned up. The mirror has no power to clean you up. And the law is a mirror that shows us our sin. It's only Jesus Christ who can clean you up. You need the cleansing agent of the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you from sin. And Jesus shed his own blood that you might be forgiven, that you might be saved, that you might be pardoned. It's time you stopped fighting against God. It's time for you to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Be your Savior or your God. Before the end comes. And so Jesus Christ. He's a mocker. He, he always mocks me. I don't know why he did not today. He's probably going to an appointment. And so God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by Jesus Christ. And he has given assurance in that he has raised him from the dead. That's why our Lord spoke to people when he walked this earth. God bless you. That's why he spoke to people as he walked this earth. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said that to Martha, the sister of Mary. Why did he say that to her? Because Martha believed in the resurrection of the dead. But she didn't believe that it was something future. She thought it was present. And Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, what shall he live? You are dead in your trespasses and sin. You are dead in the uncircumcision of your flesh. And you need to be made alive. And only Jesus Christ can give you that circumcision of the heart in the spirit. Where is it? Only Jesus Christ is in my heart. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And some of you, you think you're enjoying life, eating and drinking and being merry. How sad it will be for you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful. But I will see you again, and your sorrow will be turned into joy, and your joy no man takes from you. The world is full of appetites of the flesh. The world is full of fashion. The world passes away from the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. How do you do the will of God? You believe on his son. This is the